Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I'm fresh back from Denver. Oh, amazing time. This is RPT Red Pill Tamale, season number eight, episode number one. This is the first tamal out of a fresh dozen. That's right. Turn on the comal. Get your coffee ready. I don't know if you want some scrambled eggs on the side. I don't mm. know how you do mm, yours. Mm, mm. Get the salsa out. This is the first tamal out of the fresh dozen. Season number eight, Big Dog. It is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021, and I am a stand-up comedian. I don't just podcast and talk shit about politics. Uh, I'm actually headed to El Paso, Texas. It is a freedom of speech tour, September 9th through the 11th. I'll see you there in Chuco Town, the 915. And then the next stop after that, Brea, California. I'll see you at the Improv, September 15th. Oxnard, California. I'll see you at Levity Live, September 16th. I think they finally got it uh, staffed. Oh, badass. Yeah, apparently, right? So we shall see. Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. And now we wrapping it up. Irvine, California, November 3rd. And then H-Town, November 5th through the 7th. Not a lot of cities left. So I'll have more time to podcast. That's right. That's the good news. So yeah, man, a lot going on. Uh, shout out to Luis, a member of the, the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. We had an agent pick me up. He was uh, ch -ch -pop -pop -pop, fully loaded, fully equipped. Uh, he was TTG. He was trained to go. Um, he showed up with souvenirs. Oh, badass. Um, you know, pre-rolls, edibles. I mean, me and Javi were, you know, they rolled out the red carpet. Um, him and his, uh, his people, they took us out to eat. Real delicious Mexican food spot out there in Denver. Uh, we did five shows. It was amazing. All new staff at the Denver Improv. Uh, the head dude that runs it now, he comes from the, the cruise ship world. Mm -hmm. um, everybody was great, man. Um, psh, the sound guy had souvenirs for us. So, mm. You know, it was some fun guy, you know, stems and caps, some psilocybin, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I nibbled on the stem a little bit, you know, so I really couldn't tell. I couldn't tell the effects, but I did have a killer show on Sunday. I will say that. How many did you nibble on? Out of, one, out of how many shows? Uh, just uh, just one night. It was like Saturday night. I nibbled on very lightly. I went to micro, micro, micro dose. Uh, nibbled a little bit. We put it in some tea. Uh, that evening, Javi ended up in the shower uh, trying to make himself throw up. Hey, so, Javi, know. it sounds like me, my man. Oh, you did that happen to you? <laughs> yeah, but I, that was from less than that, so I can't even imagine. Well, he had a, like a piece of the cap and uh -huh. <laughs> like he told me like when when i was trying to microdose he told me this is what he told me he was like man just um just throw the stem and you should be good just do the stem they're really light you know you got to go based on weight i don't have a scale mm. but based on eyeballing it and it's your first time do the stem so i did shit i did like a quarter stem if that how big was the stem you know they varied there okay. was a few a few little fungi a little uh you know Fun, f fungus little little you know, parts of the earth you know and these these bitches came out of a laboratory bro these bitches came sealed in a bag because over there it's like decriminalized right uh um, oh, it was official official like stuff. it came in a bag it was grown in the lab like it was super legit it wasn't some dude had the shit in his closet a dark damp closet that's yeah. not what it was oh wow yeah so uh <clears throat> shout out to everybody that that was involved in making sure we had a great a great time bro i didn't have to change not one diaper uh, that I might had, be the highlight of the weekend. I had to make not one bottle. I had to, like, I had time to just, I had some me time. And not, not that I do a lot of baby care here, but it was definitely like, oh, I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to get my backpack ready. I'm going to walk across the street to Starbucks because the hotel is like literally surrounded by everything. Like the improv is right there, Target, uh, Bass Pro Shop. You got a Five Guys. You got a Cuban restaurant. You got a... Um, Torchies, Wahoo Tacos, like everything. So are you downtown Denver? No, 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 no. We're like in the boonies. Oh. Um, I'm, not, I'm not up on game as to like, oh, this used to be this and sure. that. But like supposedly the airport used to be over there. They tore that down, moved it elsewhere. And um, But Denver's expensive as shit. I was clowning that shit on stage, like Cali Rado. Mm. I was telling people, don't California my Texas. Um, I was teaching them about Come and Take It, the Battle of Gonzalez, all kinds of shit, man. We went in. Oh, you were riffing. On stage, yeah. Man, the last show, I was leaning up on the wall. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm just hopping out the pocket when need be if, they, if we need to act out or something big energy, and then I'll come back, get my little timing right. 
And then the show that Luis went to, I think they were like Saturday Night Late Show. Mm -hmm. I did really well Saturday Night First Show. So I was trying to recreate that. That throws you off. When you mm. do real good, the early show, you're like trying to recreate that. So Luis, that was not my best work. Uh, that's my disclaimer. So ne <laughs> next year, homie. Next year. But you know, it was great. It was great. People that don't, aren't a part of the TIA and don't sign up for, ching aren't, you know, they don't get the Chingo Chats. They don't get a lot of this kind of conversation. We did a whole episode basically last week where, you know, we went in talking about improv and acting and, you know, the different like elements of it. I don't know if you remember that. It was a week ago now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it. we talked about acting. But so. you nerd out so hardcore when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And it is. So if you're not a, a part of the TIA, join the Patreon and also try to get the, uh, the Chingo Chats version of it. But I like starting out these podcasts with a little bit more of the insight that people aren't going to get unless they sign up for the other stuff. Oh, got it. Because uh, that's interesting to hear, you know, like recreating that, like you're saying, recreating that magic from yeah. one show to another. Do, yeah. You stay in your head a little bit, don't you? No, yeah, that's literally, that's exactly uh, what I'm trying to say is like you get in your head because it's like off, what is it? Um, everything was in motion. Everything was just in sync. And you were just like, boom, boom. The timing was on. You were loose. You're relaxed. And so now you're trying to recreate that same shit. But it's so many variables. Like there's a loud table over here. You don't want to let that throw you off. Someone's filming over there. Do you address it? Do you not? The waitress is taking an order really, really loud over there, but they're new. They just staffed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, the sound sounds boomy. I think they have the mic too loud and not they, tur they didn't turn up the speakers. They turned up the mic. Mm. So now the mic's picking up feedback. So I'm thinking about all this shit while I'm up there trying to get my timing right, trying to make sure I'm communicating clearly and and you know boom bam bam on weekends when you do that many shows how often is it that like you have more than one that go the way you like i mean it wasn't bad but but you're obviously if you're doing five shows one is going to stand out is like yo on your recording put a little fire emoji next to it so you can go back and hear all the riffing you were doing um and there's going to be one out of the five that's like eh, are, are you, you been, recording all of them mm? i get the audio yeah right now but I want to start getting like the visual, like yeah. the video. Okay. We shall see. We cool, shall man. See. Well, shout out to uh, all the TIA that went. Yeah, man. Uh, a lot of people were like, man, we're listening to the podcast. Um, met a lot of cool people, man. People that like drove from far. Everybody has a different thing. Like, yo, I just heard of you or, mm. or I heard of you from this or I started following you around this time or I've been bumping you since middle school or um what's, this, what's the newer stuff people that haven't been bumping you since high school or middle school like what where are they hearing like about the podcast or what you've been doing yeah it'll be something like that like my friend told me about you type okay. of thing or they brought me or um uh, share 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 her, yeah yeah for sure share the clips share the podcast mm -hmm. some people were like we wanted to hear you talk more political shit and it's like i tried to sneak in as much as i could yeah because <laughs> you do give that disclaimer that like this is a comedy show like you've said it online plenty of times you said it on the podcast you know, but I I do though. I, I'm especially these days. I'm finding more ways to like sneak it up in there yeah. in a way that you ju it just cannot be denied. In a way that's like funny and it's fucking true. It's fucking true. All that shit is facts. Like, like there's a part where my dad, you know, just got his papers. So he's like, "No, mijo, America first. Like, no, pues we're full, mijo. Yeah, all the refugees. Yeah, we're full. We have las taxas. Yeah, we already paying a lot of taxes. Crime's gonna go up. You know, pinche." And it's like, you ain't even from here, bro. And the crowd goes wild. You had to be there. Uh, you had to be there. So, uh, man, bro, just the news these days is so fucking like annoying and depressing. Mm -hmm. It's like you just want to fucking punch something. Yeah. For context, it's, it's the 31st. This is officially the last day that we will be in the Middle East, you know, withdrawing our troops and our people. Besides the ones we left behind. Yeah. So... I didn't even put it on the list because we've been talking about it so much. But then again, as we're talking about it now, you can't ignore it, right? How many people do you think are going to be left behind? Well, first they said, I think there's about 15,000 people there. And then they were like, we got all 5,000 out, right? And now they're saying like, it's only about 200 left. Okay. I'm thinking a lot of the uh, private sector, like your Tim Kennedys, like your retired fucking army rangers, special forces motherfuckers had to go out there and do some special like, man, look, they paid us some money. We had to put together a budget. We got one dude in the hotel room back in America handling logistics. We got our, we brought some equipment. We're, uh, we're familiar with the lay of the land. We have some contacts. We know how to maneuver. We're going to sneak motherfuckers out. And we're going to have to drive them over here to this other airfield. Because there was Bagram Airfield, mm -hmm. and then you have the one in Kabul. New reports show 
that the Taliban told America, told Biden, the Biden regime, like, hey, fam, uh, y'all want to keep control of uh, Kabul? Y'all, y'all want to keep control of the city till y'all get out and y'all can have the airports and all that? And the Biden regime was like, no, we're going to shut down Bagram. We just want to focus on the Kabul airport and y'all can have the Kabul city. Your Taliban could control the Kabul city. We just kind of want the airport. Like, bitch, you ain't thinking through, did you? Mm-hmm. And I had really cool conversations with three Ubers, three mm-hmm. Lyft drivers. Um, the guy that picked me up to take me to the airport and then the guy that took me to the Denver airport from my hotel in Denver and then the gentleman that picked me up from Hobby Airport here in Houston dropped me off at home. Dude, you have the best stories with Uber drivers. I'm about to tell you. I want to give you all a summary. Yes, I want to give you the summary. So the first gentleman... A uh, young black dude, the one that picked me up in the morning when I had to leave to Denver, he was listening to The Breakfast Club. And I was like, yo, did you hear uh, they just had Boosie on there? He's like, yeah, man, I heard it. I was like, what'd you think? So we got to riffing about it. This motherfucker was more red pill than me. <laughs> yeah. This little young dude was like, yeah, man, Charlemagne, he's hit or miss. And um, he was just saying, like, I'm glad Boosie stood his ground. He's like, they be trying to force stuff. And, uh, you know, I was trying to tell him how... It's a social credit score coming to America. Like, they want you to self-censor. They want you to fall in line with the narrative. I explained to him what a struggle session is. But he already knew all that shit. Wow. Um, And then the gentleman that picked me up from the Denver airport to take me to the... uh, I'm sorry. Picked me up from the Denver hotel, take me to the Denver airport. Venezuelan. I'll let him do all the talking. I I just set that one up. uh, I was just like, oh, hey. He said, hey, okay, where you from? I said, I'm from Texas. I'm Mexican. He's like, oh, that's what's up. And I was like, how about you? He said, I'm Venezuelan. I said, man, what happened? And then he's like, well, first, Chavez came into power. Um, he, he used the right bait with the social programs. Like, he's going to give money to the elderly, and, you know, and he just slowly giving people, you know, uh, he reeled them in. He yeah. reeled them in. He reeled them in until he had all the power, all the control, all the corruption. He said so much petroleum flows out of um, Venezuela. It's so rich in petroleum. He's like, it's literally coming out the ground. He's like, it's coming out of the cracks in the fucking road. That's how much patrolling we have. He's like, they mismanaged it. He said, now the executives and the people that work at these petroleum companies, they're in like chanclas. Like they can't even afford shoes. And you work at the petroleum company. Uh, He told me about the influence of China in Venezuela over the years. And he also explained that he doesn't believe Chavez is really dead. He thinks he faked his death. He said, how are you going to catch cancer? But you gain weight and all you did was shave your hair. And now... People can't even go see the uh, like the body or any of like the how how he was buried. He's like it was very secretive. He's like I don't buy it. He was just trying to suck out all the money he could before he faked his death. Uh, he told me how Chavez's daughter has all these properties in New York and all over the, like Miami mansions and condos and townhomes. Um, so anyway, the Venezuelan cat. He was just telling me. He said he said Mexico's next. He said they're on the path of the socialism stuff. He, he was accusing AMLO of, in, in the face of the people, being like, man, I'm going to sell the private jet. He's like, yeah, that's what they do, these, these Marxists. He's like, they try to make it cool with the, oh, man, I'm cool with the indigenous. I'm cool with the natives. He's like, but secretly, they funneling out, funneling out funds. They got there in cahoots with certain shady characters, and they're, they're hooking up their cronies as well. Anyway, that's the Venezuelan. Now you have another uh, a black dude that picked me up from Hobby Airport, older gentleman, dropped me off here at home. He was listening to like some news political talk. And I was like, and it's all Afghanistan. I was like, it's interesting, ain't it? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, it's good. We finally out of there, though. It was always going to be messy, but we had to get out. And I was like, yeah, I think it's, I think people more mad of how we got out. You know what I'm talking about? Just just drop a little RPT, just a little crumb. Put a little, you know what I'm saying? Lick the pill, player. And, uh, and then he goes on to be like, well, you know, um, he says, well, you know, it's difficult because, He says, I think they left all that artillery there because it was intended to be left for the Afghan army. And I'm like, okay, I hadn't heard that one. You know, I was curious what the excuse was going to be. Yeah. And then he's like, he's like, and plus what made it difficult is they didn't anticipate the Afghan president to just cut and run and bounce like that. So everything just kind of imploded. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll give you that. I was like, but we're the ones that put him in there. He's like American pretty much, Mm. like of Afghan descent. I was like, number two, it's 52 tribes. It's not really a nation. Nobody's going to fight for that country. You know what I mean? Um, And I told him, too. I was like, they shut down Bagram Airport. That was supposed to be their air cover. 
for the Afghan army. I was like, so of course they're going to quit. They ain't got no air cover. He's like, yeah, but it was 300,000 of them and this and that. I was like, so they, sh- they shut down Bagram Airport. Now they all up just, it's just a funnel. It's a fucking death alley to try to get in there and show your papers. And then we're using the Taliban as TSA. I've heard, I've heard people, independent, you know, uh, personalities and some like, like mainstreamish talk about that. Those two things. They left it there. They left all the stuff for the mm-hmm, Afghans. Mm-hmm. And then prior to, and this is kind of where the, like the intelligence, I guess, came in, is that they knew they had intelligence that knowing that they would just, they had already cut deals with the Taliban. Uh huh. The T band. I don't know what we can say on YouTube. All There's, right. Fuck, man. The T band. Um, that they had already worked deals so that. Who the, did? Who did? The Afghan army? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the people had already been like, basically, like, they knew that once the Americans were out, like, you're all basically going to die. Would work a deal with us now. Mm. And you're going to be cool. And then before everything started going down, they did. They already knew that they were going to give up sooner. And apparently, allegedly, some of the independent sources will say that the, our intelligence knew that that was going to happen as well. And then it still proceeded with you know business as usual anyway. They're like, at this point, we have a date. We said we we're going to withdraw. We've made you know the statements. We blah blah blah. And then here you have all the all the remnants of what you know well, was yeah. attempted. Now you got a kid from Laredo dead. You know what I mean? A, a kid from Ohio, like. Working class, blue collar folk. We're the ones that got to bear the grunt of this. You know what I'm saying? And then you got, I mean, it's no wonder people in the RGV are just tired of the Democrat ways. Um, you know, this gold star mother, the mother of uh, one of the, uh, I got the kid's name, man. Uh, all of these little army, all these Marines and stuff that died, they're like 23 max. The oldest was 25, I think. Everyone was under like 20. 20. Yeah. They're not even old enough to drink. You got restaurants putting out 13 beers, talking about this table's reserved for our fallen soldiers. They're not even old enough to drink that beer, bro. They weren't even alive when, when 9-11 happened. Yeah. Some bullshit. Um, now you got the gold star mother. Here, her, her name is Shauna Chapel, mother of Marine and American hero Kareem Nikui, killed in Kabul has had her Facebook and Instagram account suspended for posts she made about her son. Disheartening. Disheartening. I don't know. I don't think I read. Uh, I knew that one. Uh, check out this. Uh, the homie Chef Gruel, RPT alumni. He said, social media censoring the accounts of a grieving Gold Star mother is another dirty way to keep pushing the brutal ideology that supports merging big tech with big government. It should scare anyone regardless of party. But nah, the lefties are too busy trying to defend what's going on. The only people trying to call out Biden are the mainstream media because they're trying to prime us. They're trying to set the table that you're going to have President Harris pretty soon. Yeah. So they're the only ones that are like, this is a debacle. I mean, we have to admit this was not this was not a clean cut. This was uh, what's happening here. Pinches my mind's way. Hey, I sent you, I go to my text, I sent you a text, because we're talking about Chavez in Venezuela and the mm-hmm. social programs. I've gotten this sent to me five times in the last 24 hours. Wow. Okay, here we go. Gavin Newsom has done more for Latinos than any other governor in history. Here's everything you need to know to vote no on the recall. Newsom's pro-Latino approach is precisely the reason Republicans launched the recall in the first place. Just read the reasons for the recall in the official voter information guide. Quote, laws... He endorsed favor foreign nationals in our country illegally over that of our own citizens. Well, yeah, duh, bitch. Uh, He backed COVID stimulus checks for undocumented Californians who have kept our state running as essential workers. Hmm. He approved temporary housing for farm workers who came down with COVID, as well as rent relief and tax cuts for small businesses. He secured health insurance for our undocumented seniors, our abuelitos who have sacrificed for us. This governor has done more for Latinos when it comes to education, health, and economic integration than any other governor in the history of California. Guerra called the recall backers anti-Latino folks. The Republican frontrunner in the recall election, Larry Elder, wants to reverse sanctuary laws, health care for undocumented people, and even birthright citizenship. He sought advice from former Governor Pete Wilson, who oversaw California's most anti-Latino decade. Quote, when you're in the middle of the tornado, you can't see what's happening on the outside, said Dolores Huerta. But it's really happening now for immigrant rights. Today is the last day to register to vote. Please use your voice for those who can't vote. Stop the Republican recall. That's what they call it. Who sent you this? 
A lot of TIA members. And what do they think about it? They're all they're all annoyed by it. They're like, just listen to this garbage. Like yeah, pandering. Yeah. yeah, just pandering to the Latinos, trying to tug at the heart. Like strings. we're stupid. Yeah, it's not like all. Obviously, it's all snippets, right? It's all snippets from whatever. They're just cherry picking things that are going to tug at the heartstrings because most people that see that and go through Instagram aren't going to go and see what they're referring to when it comes to like this social help or the social whatever or all the bad shit he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All yeah. The first the first like five comments, if you look, are probably like it's. Los Angeles is uh, not a livable place with the high uh, crime, the homelessness, and the rent is outrageous. Like, what Latinos are paying this kind of rent in the areas that, you know, he's in charge of, which is the entire state. But Terrible. Anyway, um, yeah. I just yeah, man. Yeah. Taxes out the wazoo. Gas prices out the damn wazoo. That got on way. Yeah. But, you know, uh, some people, like George Lopez, uh, refuse to just even consider that maybe he didn't do the best job. I got his story sent to me a, a handful of times too. Which one? What, what it, did he put? It was just basically a you know vote no on the recall. And where was he? Is he in his car? No, he just because <laughs> I saw that one on Twitter. Hey, he started in Spanish. Man, I'm a play. Oh, I didn't. Shit. I didn't see the video. It was just screenshots. Like he was sharing other you know like uh, democratic social not the socialist but democratic pages saying vote no on the recall. Basically, man, Hollywood is doing a best. Uh, <laughs> that boy follows me on Twitter though. Uh. Um here this boy man oh my god bro you, you don't know nothing about politics here he goes he, he his caption this he posted this august 17th um from his car while he's driving and shit is noisy and he put mira yo hey californians bilingually opposed at gavin newsom hashtag gov newsom check it out Man, that was painful, bro. That's cringe as fuck. First of all, that Spanish kicked his ass. Uh, <laughs> tu, tu haces, uh, lo, lo tu haces, yo, yo hago. How many takes did you have to do, George? Um, and then he got his hat up like this, like a motherfucker. He got that bitch up to the sky. Um, George, it, 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 he looked uncomfortable doing it. It looked like somebody made him do it. Almost like, man, it's my homie. Fuck. Well, I got to be cool <laughs> with Newsom, bro. Shit, this motherfucker paid for my lunch in Fresno. Fuck. Um... It looked very forced and uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, do, do I look at the asses? And then it's so noisy, bro. Come on now. If you really want to help your boy out, get in a quiet area. Uh, Zuby. Do you follow Zuby on? Yeah. Okay, so mm-hmm. did you see his, uh, his Instagram post earlier? I think it was earlier today. It was, uh, I hope you are all aware that throughout this pandemic, celebrities, social media influencers, singers, rappers, podcast hosts, and more have been paid to promote lockdowns, mask mandates, and the vax. In multiple countries, this is a fact. You should all know this. I want to see some proof of that. Yeah, I want to see. Yeah, I mean, we've all, because we've speculated from the beginning, like before the year even started, that they were doing that. Because you could just tell by some of these messages and the way that it's geared and the way that they say it. Like, these people didn't just come up with these thoughts on their own. Yeah, talking points, man. Talking points. There you go. Pinches influencers, no island madre. Uh, I don't know how y'all sleep at night. <clears throat> hey, do what you do. I got to keep my integrity. Um, you know, but if the bag is big enough, you might have me over there with Beto O'Rourke and shit. Again? Yeah, he didn't pay me the first time, though, so <laughs> fuck that. Okay, so look, th- this video went viral. California teacher has her students pledge to the pride flag, and she took down the American flag. Did you see that video? Hell yeah. I don't I, even want to play it. I, so put, I put it on my story. We could just talk about what it is. I put it on my story, and I was like, parents, pay attention to what teachers your kids have. Yeah. I know all teachers are not like this. You know, props to all the good teachers, uh, especially the the uh, the patriotic ones like John Copel. Mm-hmm. How, how you say his name? Nopal. Copel. Copel. Um, Nopal. No. Yeah, and and you know, I was going off about this shit around Javi and Javi's teachers. Uh, Javi's wife is a teacher, and I'm like, not all teachers, Javi. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, but this this lady, I forget what state she was from. California. I think she got she got fired yet. She's under something? investigation. This woman took down the american flag in her classroom the kids complain because they're doing the pledge of allegiance to nothing they're having to stand up and cut and hold their you know cover their heart 
and looking at nothing. They're looking at an empty space where the flag used to be. She took it down because it made her uncomfortable. You want to play this? Let's play it. Play this old fuck shit. Period, we have announcements and they do the Pledge of Allegiance. I always tell my class, stand if you feel like it, don't stand if you feel like it, say the words if you want, don't have to say the words. So my class decided to stand but not say the words. Totally fine. Except for the fact that my room does not have a flag. It used to be there. But I took it down during COVID because it made me uncomfortable. And um I packed it away and I don't know where and I haven't found it yet. <laughs> but my kid today goes, hey, um, it's kind of weird that we just stand and then, you know, we say it to nothing. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I got to find it. Like, I'm working on it. I got you. <laughs> in the meantime, I tell this kid, we do have a flag in the class that you can pledge your allegiance to. And he like looks around and he goes, oh, that one? Okay. Pledge your allegiance to the pride flag. Maybe she was trying to be funny. Maybe she was. Of course, she's trying to be funny. Maybe she wasn't literally forcing all her students to pledge allegiance to the pride flag. But I'm so glad I did not grow up like that. I'm so glad that I cannot recall any of my teachers, fifth grade, fourth grade, third grade, second grade, first grade, that would be that anti American and that brainwashing, that cuckoo, that cuckoo crazy that you're going to remove the flag of your country from the classroom when. This is like constructive brainwashing. When you got kids pledging the, you know what I mean, pledging allegiance to the flag, like we need some kind of nationalism. We need some semblance of we're on the same fucking team. Yeah. If not, you end up like 52 tribes in Afghanistan. We already have tribes over here. We do. You got, you know, the conservative folk. You got the left folk. That's the two biggest tribes. It's very tribal. And then you got like motherfuckers that just are in the hood, in the food desert, trapping. That's a tribe. You got your uh, you know, undocumented people living in the shadows. That's a tribe. So we got to have some fucking semblance of we're on the same team. This is the symbol. No, you know, some crazy stuff like no American left behind. You know what I mean? Like psh, we man ship that lady off somewhere, man. Like you you hate America that bad. Number 1, you don't deserve to be a teacher. Number 2, you don't deserve to live here. That's my opinion. Dude, these, this cultural battle, dude, like we talk about all the time, it is intensifying to a crazy degree right now with people, politically, obviously, but just across the board in entertainment and in school. Like once you get, once you start talking about education and the entertainment and its effects on people, especially kids, mm -hmm. you, get, you get a lot of people are just like, nah, and it's not a thing. That's like, not a real thing. Like, for example, the culture war of who Chingo Bling stands for, what Chingo Bling represents, and what George Lopez represents. I know I'm not on his level. I know it's apples and oranges. It's mm. two different things. He has different, you know, influence and he, he has a different flavor. He's from a different class, a different generation. However, I'm the future. <laughs> I represent the trend of what's to come. You know what I mean? Like that's the old way of thinking. The old way, the old anti-American, we're a victim, uh, you know, just uninformed, politically illiterate. That shit is played out. I represent the future, like the trend. We are swinging in the direction of my type of Latino is the future. Meaning the one, like think about how many, how many Latinos are in the, in the Marines, bro. Like the backbone of the Marine Corps is like Southwest Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, a ton of Texans. Uh, you got a ton of black folk, Irish people. I mean, people that aren't falling for the okie doke. They're not necessarily fighting for the president. They're fighting for the country. That we still people that still understand the importance of a, a Second Amendment and First Amendment, and they're weary. They don't trust their government. I guess the George Lopez crowd loves their government, loves their governor. They trust everything. They all about the vax. They can't wait to get that tenth booster. You know what I mean? My crowd likes to ask questions. They a little bit dubious of the government. They not comfortable with how big tech be silencing people over there. They cheering on censorship. Yeah. Pick a side and ride. Are you pro-censorship? Are you about being uh, uh, politically illiterate? Are you about perpetuating this victimhood? Is that what you doing, bro? You on some Reverend Al Sharpton type shit? You want to be motherfucking uh, Jesse Jackson? I'm riding with Biden, yo. Fuck that. <laughs> and we ain't riding with Newsom either. And I say what I said. El Paso next stop, September 9th through the 11th. Get your shit right. 
get with the next class, get with the next generation. We looking towards the future. Uh, this is where we live. Uh, all my fans understand how they're getting fucked at the gas pump. They understand taxes. They're understanding that we want a piece of the American dream. And we also understand that this victimhood and this bull crap that these Democrats have been selling us all through the media, the media lied to us. And I bought it for many years. But now we open in our eyes. So if you want to be with the Awaken crew, come on through. Come El Paso, through. September 9th through the 11th. That, makes me, that reminds me of the next uh, bullet point. The Joe Rogan video, did you see it? Uh-huh. Okay. I saw the montage, how they edited it. Yes. Yeah. Very well said, right? Mm-hmm. I want to show that. Yeah, I'm going to pull that one up just because, I mean, it, it speaks volumes to what we're talking about. And you got people like Joe Rogan that people are ha- not having to, but they're just, they're, 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 they're following him for better news sources, information, thoughts than people who are supposed to be in power. Let's just say that. Absolutely, because the people that are in power, the the um the people with the big megaphone, you know, the Fauci's and the the uh, Joy Reeds and all these people, it's not very credible. It's flip floppy. It's wishy washy. The messaging is bad. It's confusing. They're trying to force you. They try to belittle you. <laughs> can't don't have the vax. Can't have a job. You know what I mean? That type of bullshit. That type of anti-American bullshit. Right now, man, George Lopez reminds me of the teacher that wants to take the flag down. That's how, that's what you remind me of, big dog. You remind me of you want people to salute to the pride flag. You one step away. You might as well. We're on Team Rogan. We're on Team America. And anyway, play the clip. We're on Team Boosie. Yeah, Team Boosie, man. Freedom of speech advocate. As soon as you give politicians power, any kind of power... Oh, pulled up another exist. clip. Hold on, I got to start it over. Oh, man, look at that beautiful flag. We got so many lights in the studio now. I know, right? Here we go. Bag it up, bag it up. Where's the, oh, undo the audio. Yeah. Here. You give politicians power, any kind of power that didn't exist previously. If they can figure out a way to force you into carrying something that lets you enter businesses or lets you do this or lets businesses open historically they are not going to give that power up they find new reasons to use i'll do that we have to protect those freedoms at all cost whether you agree with people's choices or not because it is the foundation that this country was founded on freedom this idea of freedom there's so many people that think it's frivolous it's not important it's not the main thing that we should be focused on but it is the literal structure that allows How's this country to be so fucking amazing? Every single country that's ever existed other than the United States, up until 1776, every fucking country that has ever existed was run by dictators, all of them. This is the first experiment in self-government that actually worked, and it created the greatest superpower the world's ever known. It created the greatest cultural machine, the greatest machine of art and creativity and innovation right fucking here. And how did it do that? It did it through freedom. And as soon as you see something, anything that comes along and inhibits your freedom, you should be very cautious of that thing. You should be very suspicious. Because anything that comes along that can inhibit your freedom is, by definition, anti-American. Dude, this is my third time watching it. It still gets me wanting to run through a wall. It's as real as it gets. I just have so much I want to say right now. It's as real as it gets. First of all, that editing is amazing. Good job. Let's read that caption. Chris Wade, MMA. Give me liberty or give me death. Number two, props to Rogan and and God. I'm just going to say God for inspiring him and speaking through him because that was a very well said rant on a motherfucking podcast. Um, Come on now. Y'all got to be team freedom at some point. And... Sure, there's a lot of people that are like, it's it's to keep us safe, and it's so that we can open back up, and you know, I hate masks too, but we got to do it, and, and it's okay, man, we force vaccines on kids, anyway, this is just another one, okay, keep believing that, yeah. keep believing that, meanwhile, they, they censoring a gold star mother who's grieving over her son, and she got something to say on social media, um, what's the, uh, the show that we first heard Ed, Ed Calderon, it was Sean Hayes, was it, Sean... 
the yeah, Navy yeah, SEAL, right? Yeah, yeah. He mm-hmm. was, I believe. Mm-hmm. I follow him. Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about him? He posted something. It might have actually been that clip, or maybe he was interacting on on the in the comments of that section, and somebody said something, you know, that was just like, and and the orange guy is a bad guy, right? Uh, but whatever, whatever. It was a really good comment by some lady, some girl, and then people were then attacking uh, Sean Ryan about like. Well, there's, you know, all the counterpoints to why Orange Man was bad. And he was like, he replied to the original girl and was like, look, just these people are too far gone. Don't waste your time and energy on them. Yeah. They're there. That's it. Yeah. Just, and mm-hmm. he said it in a really poignant way that it stuck with mm-hmm. me. And it's true because a lot of all these people are just, they're too far gone. And you can't worry about it. You can't waste your time on them. And you know what it is too, bro? Not only do you have celebrities misleading people, right? We already talked about them people. You got this like fools gone wild type culture right? where they're not, I get it. It's not their job to highlight how amazing America is, right? Mm Because they're trying to be funny and silly and immature, Um, which is something that I I do as well for a living. That's how I I make my money. Right. But um, (laughs) being immature, (laughs) being a class clown. But one thing, let's, let's point this particular aspect of the video and the rant that I feel that a lot of people are blind to. Check this out. When he said, when it's like towards, I think it's like the second half of the video, where he says, the fact that we're based on freedom, the fact that every other country before 1776 were dictators, that is what made us a superpower. We created so much art, culture, innovation. Capitalism did that. He said we did it through freedom. Like he show, in the edit, it shows like the, uh, the Macintosh computer. You know, it's showing just like, manufacturing whatever happened to american manufacturing Mm -hmm. somehow we let the fuck boys take over and be in charge some of these comedians need to get recalled i'm just gonna put it out there (laughs) you supporting a recall governor you need to get recalled somebody was uh commentating on uh like past you know wars and and uh just engagements between countries and they were mentioning i didn't know this but how it was you know it's always about like american culture influences the world so greatly like across the board whether it's you know countries that don't have a lot to mm-hmm. people that are you know battling in other wars and they were mentioning how the ussr had fallen when it was introduced to things like levi's like the 501s they fell because of that and it was the american culture that had an influence on it you know what i'm saying uh... beatles tapes it was american culture that was eventually the fall of something like the USSR. So it somehow made it to where people were like longing for freedom. Yes. And it disrupted the uh, the facade of we are the USSR and, yes. and fucking communism is where it's at. Yeah. So then I started looking it up and five oh the Levi 501s were like a, they were a signal of freedom to the Russians at the time. How amazing is that? And you know what? Americans are so spoiled, bro. Like that punk ass teacher. Um, all these anti-American people, man. I can't stand y'all. I, I'm so glad. Like, I, I put it to you like this, bro. I'm. I don't even want to. I don't even want to call these motherfuckers out. <laughs> like, bitch, I'm more patriotic than you, hoe. Like, that's got to be. You know how like when kids are roasting each other. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, but I could do more push-ups, or like, I bet I could beat you up, or I bet I could run faster, or I bet I could play Nintendo better. It needs to be like, bitch, I'm more patriotic than you, hoe. I bet y'all love my country more than you. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's got to be the shift. And that's got to be the shift the because we got are, these weenies in charge. Well, those weenies are the people that, like Sean Ryan was saying, are too far gone. They'll be like, yeah, and you think that's a good thing? Like, they, the rebuttal would be that, and you think that's a good thing? What, what's a good thing? That you're more patriotic than me? Oh, my God, you fucking lefties, <laughs> man. You know what, bro? I did a real good job in Denver um, of, like, focusing on you know, my comedy, like I was telling you, like, because I had a little free time in the daytime, I'd, I'd um, you know, me and Javi go down to the lobby, get a little breakfast or something. I'd walk across the street, get some Starbucks. I'd have my backpack where, like, I'd have my Bible, um, my Mike Lindell book, amazing book. Um, you know, maybe just like my notes and, you know, my headphones, just basically my iPad, just little stuff to just be like, all right, I'm gonna call my mom real quick. Let me read a little chapter out of Proverbs. Let me read a chapter out of Mike Lindell. Let me just get my mind right. Chit chat with locals, go for a walk, get some sun. I don't know where the fuck I was going with this, but but here's here's, here's my point. I tried to stay off the politics because you, you hear how worked up I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. I'm over here like, <laughs> bitch, I'm more patriotic than you, ho. I bet you I love my country more than you. Give me liberty or give me death. Yeah. That's it. Come on, man. You got to be a man. You got to have some nuts. Stop being like, stop being like, uh, uh, 
naive and oblivious because when that crisis comes to your doorstep, some of y'all going to fold. When that bullshit social credit score from Australia comes over here via uh, Chinese bot politicians, I already know some of y'all can't wait to snitch. Some of y'all can't wait to censor us. Some of y'all can't wait to get us banned out of venues because y'all some hoes, bro. Speaking of, I think California, they uh, they blocked the mandatory indoor across the state mandate for pa- like vaccine passports. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a bill, right? That, yeah. got, that got blocked. And guess what? You're welcome. That's coming at you courtesy of Patriots. 100%. Um, shout out to like Inform with Anthony, Lexit Movement, uh, everybody putting in the groundwork, Jesse Olguin, all the influencers, everyone that's like dodging dodging big tech like dodging being put in big tech jail everybody that got to have two three backup pages bro think about that everyone has to talk in hieroglyphics yeah motherfuckers got to use magalingo as nino would say um motherfuckers got to speak pig latin and shit like like i even put up a a meme Uh, we walked over to a bass pro shop and um me and javier just browse and we're just walking around they got four four wheelers and fishing stuff and badass patriotic under armor sweaters <laughs> and we went over to the sunglass section and i just put some on i took a selfie and i put uh the i don't trust my government starter pack oh yes yeah, but that. i had to misspell everything <laughs> i had to misspell government i had to, you got to put a zero instead of the o because you already know they got ai ai is listening to every word i'm saying right now on this google platform yeah um anyway uh wait, anyway wait, what was I, know, I know who will never get censored though People that are these, regurgitating these leftists, these leftist influencers, these these Hollywood Latinos, uh, your Eva Longorias, the people that refuse to say anything positive on Fourth of July, they just go fucking ghost on the Fourth of July on Independence Day. Uh, anytime there's police brutality, anytime something happens to a Latino, they can't wait to spin it into a Latino Lives Matter. Just come out of the neo-Marxist closet already, bro. We would respect you so much more if you just say I'm a fucking Marxist. Oh, to take it back, you said you were you were uh, trying to stay away from politics. Yeah, I did a good job of keeping my blood pressure down and just like not listening to Steve Bannon and just not see what Ben Shapiro talking about. Like, you know what I mean? Just, just. I think I would like maybe post things to my story mm-hmm. a little bit here and there. Remember, we talked about for September. You know. Oh yeah. It's like, oh shit, September first. Yeah. Yeah, September first. So uh, we'll yeah, see. I'm gonna we're gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna self censor and. Um, you know, just for the sake of the snowflakes that still follow me. Yeah. yeah. And see what happens. And compare yeah. it to uh, August Analytics and yeah. how many times you got kicked off platforms and or suspended. Yeah. I was in Twitter. Uh, TikTok? TikTok jail. And Facebook. Facebook jail. Hey, homie. Yo see la rifle, homie. Hey. I'm, in, I'm in and out, homie. I'm, I ain't scared to go back, big doc. You ain't scared of the gulag? I ain't scared to go back. Yeah, I'm in the social media gulag. So go back to Gavin Newsom, California, though. I did. I was reading a little bit about how even the Democrats, including Newsom, were scared to sign that bill had it uh-huh. made it to his desk I heard because about of that. the recall. I heard about that. So you put all that together and it's like, okay, was it one of those things that didn't make it? You know, why did it make it through? And are they actually kind of relieved that it didn't make it through because they want him to win this recall? Because it can, it'll mm. end up back on his desk apparently in January. So if he retains governorship, he could still just take over on the mandates. And then once they, and then if they ever get a Republican uh, governor eventually, yeah. right, a good one, uh, hopefully a, an America first one, they can always undo it. Yeah. Um, l- real quick, let's pivot on over to a. Uh, Jen Psaki responding to questions about the T-ban having all our weapons. And before we go into that, let me just briefly, you know, we have a chart and we will briefly just um, tell you a little bit of statistics of uh, what the Taliban now has. Right. They, they the Taliban, the T-ban got built back better. They're stronger than they've ever been since 1996 when they first came about. <clears throat> they now have. And before I read this. There's a clip of Trump in 2015 talking about how in Iraq, he's like, every time there's a firefight or something, we leave everything behind. We, they, every time a bullet is shot, we leave everything behind. He's like, he's like they left 2,000 Humvees. He's like, these are million-dollar machines. They're bulletproof. They're amazing technology. Um, he said, we didn't leave a dozen. We didn't leave two. We didn't leave five. He said, we left 2,000 
Humvees. He's just giving examples. In 2015, this man been trying to tell y'all how to negotiate, how to be strong, how to be a leader, how to be America first, how to have respect out here in this world. Uh, and don't be a fucking little cuck to the terrorists. All right. Here's the Taliban's new arsenal, courtesy of Joe Biden. Merry Christmas. 22,174 Humvees. Uh, you have 42,000 pickup trucks and SUVs, 64,000 plus machine guns. You're not allowed to have an AR though. 8,000 trucks like the big boys, 162,000 radios, walkie talkies, 16,000 night vision goggles and devices, uh, 358,000 plus assault rifles, 126,000 pistols. I mean, we're talking about Black Hawk, Black Hawk helicopters, uh, a couple other different types of helicopters, and about four different types of planes, varying all the way from small Cessnas to C-130 transports. Um, it is ridiculous, the fucking birthday gift they received courtesy of Joe Biden and his regime. Congratulations to leftist Hollywood Latinos who promoted this bullshit. Blood is on your hands. Are you? Was that on Sean Ryan's page by chance? I don't know where I got this from. from. Oh, a uh, go to IG. There's a uh, open your IG, and there was a video a clip that he posted of Trump, and I can't remember if it was a really good one, but I think it's worth pl playing if he put it. It's like the third okay you post said on Sean. Yeah, Sean Ryan seven sixty two is his IG. Okay, and I also follow his Sean Ryan show. Here mm -hmm. we go. Okay, uh, this is Trump speaking. You yeah. want me to? You want me yeah, to play? Yeah, twenty seventeen. Yeah, just okay. hold it up to the mic. Withdrawal would create a vacuum that terrorists, including ISIS and Al-Qaeda, would instantly fill, just as happened before September 11th. And as we know, in 2011, America hastily and mistakenly withdrew from Iraq. Hasty withdrawal. Would yeah, he been telling y'all, bro. He been telling y'all, but guess what? People try to, um, what's the word? People try to be like, Trump had to deal with that. That's what the driver, driver said as well. Oh yeah, Trump already had to deal with the Taliban. So they were trying to, <sighs> my God, bro. I'm, I was like, and that's what I told the guy. I was like, well, it'd be impossible to find out if he would have withdrew in the exact manner. I was like, according to him, I was like, we don't know. I said, according to Trump, he would have pulled the troops out last and he would have blew up forts on the way out and so on. But instead, we're hearing re reports of our troops having to clean up all type of shit, piss, all kind of stuff, leave the latrines nice and clean as, as we leave and exit. We clean it up our mess. Well, I don't know whose mess that was, yeah. honestly, because I, I don't know what the fuck. But a lot of these bases now where they got like Afghan refugees, they shitting on the ground. I, that's what they do. These Some of these people just countryside, man. Mm. Uh, there's also reports of countries like in Germany, anytime they took in a large Afghani refugee, uh, amount of refugees, mm -hmm. you saw a big spike in like, oh, 13-year-old girl raped by these two motherfuckers awaiting asylum. Um, <sighs> crime out the wazoo, you know. And that's how the globalists, that's how they are, bro. The lefties, the progressives, They'll try to cancel you if you try to be like, uh, uh, maybe maybe we shouldn't be taking in so many next time. It's like, oh, you're fucking xenophobic. What's your problem? Here's uh, something interesting. The Human Rights Museum reopens to vaccinated visit visitors only. How ironic. How ironic. Human Rights Museum. Where is that? Uh, where is it? I don't know. It's a good question. It's Vax like only. I don't know. It doesn't say. Well, for everybody who got the vax, do you even know what the um, efficacy rate is of the vax you got? At this point, it's probably in the 40s, maybe? Yeah, I think, I think the latest number's in the 40s. The only good argument I heard for the jab is if long-term corona is a thing. Like, meaning, we don't know if this shit's going to just be a, 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 a thing that 20 years from now, you're still having all kind of little complications mm -hmm. or whatever. And if the jab helps reduce that that thing that we don't know right we don't know we don't know because we're depending on the ccp and 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 their organizations that they back like the who and the cdc and the nih and all these corrupt people in my opinion allegedly we're depending on them they've been knowing about corona 
because it came out of their lab. They they've been knowing since like September of 2019 or some shit. Meanwhile, they sucking up all the PPP PPE. I'm sorry, that's something <laughs> that's money. They sucking up all the PPE. They turn around selling us back masks. They confusing us. Mask work, it don't work. It's water droplets. No, it's aerosol. No, it's viral load. No, it's it's airborne. No, it's this. No, it's that. You gotta you gotta wipe down your vegetables with with uh, bleach and it's a fucking shit show. There's a couple of these clips. We'll just... <clears throat> I remember the I cussed one. a lot this episode, but go on. That's all right. That's America right there. Simple questions. Acknowledging that you, you're going to try to limit what access they do have to some of the weaponry in ways that you can't communicate here. But at the end of the day, whether it's not the United States that's under risk as a function of this, are Americans around the globe? I mean, are Western interests now more at risk because the Taliban has new access to all this weaponry? Well, again, Peter, I would say that uh, we, uh, the world will be watching. We have an enormous amount of leverage, including access to the global marketplace, which is not a small piece of leverage to the Taliban, who are now overseeing large swaths of Afghanistan. Uh, certainly, our objective was not to leave them with any equipment, but that is not uh, always an option when you are looking to retrograde and move out of a war zone. Uh, but that is our clear leverage we have with the Taliban, and again, our capacities uh, are our over-the-horizon capacities, which, by the way, killed two ISIS terrorists just last week and continue to be utilized by our men and women on the ground, uh, remain in place and remain in place in the region. There are other parts of the world, Somalia, Libya, Yemen, where we don't have a presence on the ground and we still prevent terrorist attacks or threats to U.S. citizens living in the United States or around the world from, uh, from growing. Okay, okay. She just finished saying that we killed two terrorists. Well, come to find out, it was a family of 10, including six children. Mm -hmm. So, hey, America's back. Way to go. Drone strikes on innocent civilians and kids. Them kids weren't, you know what I'm saying? Them kids weren't shot callers. <laughs> so, hey, man, y'all want to keep listening to motherfucking uh, these uh, cuck-ass Latino Hollywood motherfuckers? Go on, be my guest. Here, let's fuck it. Let's see if this one's any... Talk about as the U.S. prepares to leave, whether tonight or tomorrow, there are see if it's any better. dollars worth of U.S. made munitions, arms, military aircraft, um, armored vehicles that have fallen in the hands of the Taliban here, giving them new capabilities they didn't have before this. Are Americans less safe now because the Taliban now has access to billions of dollars worth of American made weaponry? Well, let me unpack your question a little bit, because uh, the U.S. military, part of their retrograde effort is to uh, reduce the amount of military equipment or apparatus that uh, anyone on the ground has access to. I'm not going to get into the details of how they do that, but that is part of their effort. I will also uh, reiterate something that, that our national security advisor said just last week. We had to make an assessment several weeks ago about whether we provide materials to the Afghan national security forces so that they could fight the fight. Obviously, they decided not to fight uh, or not, and we made the decision to provide them with that equipment and the material. The third piece I would note that's very important here is that we have not assessed that any group on the ground, uh, whether it's ISIS-K or the Taliban, has the ability to attack the United States. Whoa. We clearly need to, sorry, that was an aggressive bug. Um, we need to uh, ensure that remains the case, but that is not a capability that we have assessed to be uh, the case at this point in time. There's a difference between the threat that is posed to U.S. men and women serving or people who are gathering outside of the gates in Kabul and whether these individuals can attack the United States. So check this out, Rob. Mm. When you have this kind of debacle, mm -hmm. you expect, somebody to um what do they as they say throw their stars on the table and say i resign i fucked up you expect somebody to get fired you expect heads to roll even if it's symbolic sure only one uh, uh marine i forget what is his official title it's like colonel or something i forget what it is only one got let go and it was because he did a two-minute video where he said hey I'm, i've been in this uh I've been in the Marines 18, 17, 18 years. Um, you know, he's about to get his pension in 20 years. He said, I'm, but I'm going to risk it all right now because I demand accountability from my superiors. That's the least y'all could do type of thing. So he was the only one. He was the only one. Uh, he, he uploaded the video like 2 p.m. and like a, or something like that. A couple hours later, he's, he's fired. Was he, it the Stuart? Uh, I think Shelly. Yeah, Scheller. 
Yeah, Scheller. He yeah. was relieved of duty for calling out Biden failure in Kabul, announced his resignation. Yeah, relieved of duty. Not not General Austin, not General Milley, um, you know, not Blinken. Hmm. Not Blinken, not Milley, not Austin. Nobody in the Biden regime has really been held accountable. They're just all do do do. Right? Well, you know, it's war. That's that's what happens. Got to break, got to break a couple of eggs, make an omelet. That is the, the, the take from a lot of people that, you know, that is, the, we got to break a couple of eggs, make an omelet. They fell for it. You know, it's like, well, nobody wanted to be there forever. Bitch, we agree on that. Yeah. The fucking debate is the way in which it happened. Y'all, y'all so, y'all so, um, y'all have so much cognitive bias. You know what I'm saying? People on the left got so much cognitive bias. They trust the news so much. They love Biden so much. They love Eva Longoria so much. They over there with Alyssa Milano and them. And the last thing they want to do is be able to say, yeah, I think they fucked up. They can't say that. They can't. They're on a team. However, Trump could get booed by, by a whole bunch of Trump supporters. Yeah, but he, the way he backpedals like immediately on the fly. If it doesn't work. You'll be the first to know. <laughs> it's a thing of genius. He's a man of the paper. Yeah, man. So before we finish our rants on uh, Afghanistan, which I'm sure we'll still continue, even though today is the final day of the withdrawal. Supposedly, even though there's still people there and they left the canines. Oh, r- real quick. <laughs> what's the biggest number you've heard? And what's the smallest number you've heard of people that are still there? Because it varies yeah, sm- wildly. The smallest number I heard was like 200. Another, another number I heard was like maybe another 5,000. So, and then, there's even like teachers and students mm-hmm. and all kinds of people. Because I heard in one of those clips, I didn't play it. It was somewhere up on that Twitter feed. Uh, Jen Psaki had said that they, they have evacuated over 100,000 people so far. And that they were only like a couple hundred left. But others are speculating. This is obviously people on the internet, people that are in the, in the uh, intelligence type of world, I guess, are reporting that there's a couple thousand people. And I think the Daily Mail had written something yesterday. They said there's only about 50 to 100 people left. And some of those don't want to leave. They're, they're really saying that a lot of people don't want to leave. Yeah, I don't know, man. So I guess what, That's I mean, news to me, I guess. Hey, you got teachers that want to take down the American flag in the classroom, so maybe. I don't put it past nobody. So There's we, people that want Newsom to stay. I don't, I don't oh, put yeah. it past Apparently nobody. Apparently 49% or 51%. percent mm-hmm. pendejos. So this is the host of Kabul's uh, Peace Studio informs Afghanistan everything will be okay while he's being held at gunpoint. So legitimately, the guy is, you know, on this peace TV, whatever, telling people everything's going to be okay while he's being held at gunpoint. Obviously, we can't understand what he's saying, but how funny. I mean, it's obviously not really funny, but the irony of this. While he's being held basically at gunpoint. So this is an Afghan TV show surrounded by Taliban. He's like, everything's going to be okay. And he's surrounded by guns. Yeah. Hilarious. With armed Taliban fighters standing behind him, the presenter of Afghan TV's Peace Studio political debate program says the Islamic Emirate, quote, Taliban's preferred name, wants the public to cooperate with it and should not be afraid. That's wild, dude. There used to be things like this that were made of satire. <laughs> hey, man, SNL back in the day might have, you know what I'm saying, like poked fun, but they're too busy poking fun at uh, uh, conservative people, Republicans, Trump supporters, Trump. They made like a whole, how many years did Alec Baldwin get to play Trump? All four or All three? Four. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what they were busy doing is making fun of Orange Man Bad. And here we are. Y'all are in a situation where y'all not even allowed to make fun of Biden. The best y'all could do is have Jim Carrey up there just being all energetic and awake and alert. Jim Carrey's a wild dude, too. Yeah. Let me play Biden. Watch how I play it. Just to sleep. <laughs> Basically. Just go to your couch and sleep. Look at my watch. Here, let's end on something a little bit more cultural here. Australian modeling agency does away with gender categories. Weirdos. Look at this weird ass shit. Yeah, so they're, uh, you know, going for the non-binary folk. I think it says it in the article here. At the Australia, beginning. man, they done lost their mind over there, bro. Yeah, it's like people weren't, uh, they weren't marketing to the non-binary folk, so they decided to be the first agency or magazine to do so. Hmm. Hmm. 
According to CNN, Abercrombie and Fitch launched its first gender inclusive clothing collection called the Everybody Collection in 2018 for kids ages 5 to 14. Because of customer demand, it features an assortment of children's clothes, including camouflage prints, bomber jackets, and crew neck sweatshirts and tees influenced by skate culture. <laughs> The company represents 35 models and has previously worked with brands like Adidas, Gucci, H&M, and Nike. Hmm. This is a, a modeling agency based out of Melbourne. They ain't got no freedom over there anyway because they ain't got no guns. They really don't. They just going to handle you however they want to handle you. You will uh, comply. You will comply. We've hit our topics for today, man. We got we to gotta chat about, I don't know, what's... What, Everything that we've gone through today, like it's where we tr I try to bring stuff that and you bring stuff from your notes that are just like it's across the board, right? Like mm -hmm. it's cultural, it's political, uh, there's things in entertainment. We're doing RPT shorts now. But how do you feel about the future of the United States as it stands on uh, August 31st, 2021? Mm, the future. I mean, I'm going to have to just be optimistic. I'm going to have to uh, si take the side that, um, you know, those that that in in essence want death to america mm -hmm. in other words athletes celebrities actors comedians and school teachers that are anti-american are going to have to get put in their place taken out of business uh defunded and recalled like you're gonna have to change your tune because that is it's like oil and water it's like the majority we are the majority the majority is we want our country to remain a country you know what I'm saying? We like being a superpower. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. We ain't about to get let these other countries and tribes and, and, and terrorist groups punk us and scare us. We shall not be divided. And I feel that that's the optimism in me mm -hmm. that people are going to have to recognize and have to cross over to our side. And, and the media, people are going to have to start being more um, dubious of the media because the media tries to paint people like you and I as xenophobic, uh, uh, white supremacists, uh, racist, uh, uh, um, extremists, domestic terrorists, like whatever, just because you don't like lockdowns, because you like freedom, and you don't want people forcing you to do shit, and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I feel like a lot of this is uh, it's it's psychological. It's it's psychologically important to. Uh, it's funny you mentioned earlier how when you're out of town, you're trying to like limit the amount of political stuff you talk about or even consume. Yeah, because that's part of the goal. Like if you really start to like dissect what's going on in the media, let's just talk about the meat like mainstream media. Mm -hmm. If they can get you to doubt the things you're already believing, it's a part of their plan to get you to just be like, all right, whatever. I'm just, I give up. You know. You don't have to give up, but you also don't have to be like at a 10 all the time and stressing yourself out, yeah, yeah. making yourself, you know, worried. Because I get a lot of, you know, messages and, and articles and videos and whatever sent from podcast listeners, which is great. I appreciate it. And some of them are, you know, they come attached with with mess like messages where you can feel the sentiment is like, I'm really worried. I'm really stressed. I'm really, you know, concerned. I'm mad. I'm sad. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do, you're better off like trying to ground yourself, stay level headed, mm -hmm. continue to inform yourself and inform those around you that want to be informed and not forcing things down people's throats and try to change people's minds because it, it has a worse outcome. Yeah. So I guess, I guess one way to measure and manage is don't, and this is just to all the members of the Thea, like everyone that listens to the podcast, we appreciate it. Hell yeah. But don't let us scare you to death either. <laughs> yeah. Um, we appreciate that y'all listen to the show and hopefully we remain one of those trusted, credible sources that like, you know what, these dudes have a cool perspective and they mean well and, and they try to make it interesting and entertain it. Mm -hmm. Cool. We appreciate it. One thing to manage and measure is make sure you're still breathing. <laughs> make sure your blood pressure ain't getting out of whack and you don't let your cortisol stress hormone get high. Yeah. What we need to do is not be afraid, but just be prepared. So in other words, what are some things you and your family can do to just kind of stay ahead of the curve, plan, you know, as you know, the dollar might implode. You know what I'm saying? They printing it out like 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 it's going out of style. They, another two trillion here, another two trillion there. We're up to like 12 trillion. Um, they want to they they're it's we're being attacked from within mm -hmm. just as much as we're being attacked from from the outside. But prepare. You know what I'm saying? Be smart. Be ready. Be a leader. If you have sons, teach them to be tough. You know what I mean? If you got daughters, teach them to be self-reliant, independent, pioneer women, and tough. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I got uh, Mickey, my 13 year old. She has to send me l- submit little videos every day. It's like, let me get some planks. Let me get some shoulder taps because she's in break dancing. And I told her this is a good system that will give you an edge over the competition. That's cool. You're trying to do some of these little moves where you got to hold up your body. I was like, you got to have strong upper body. You got to have a strong core. Otherwise, you're going to try to do a move. You're going to slip and hit your face on the ground. Um, but anyway, that's just me trying to stay on top of their mental sharpness. Um, you know, teach them to be leaders, teach them to love their country, not be weak. And just prepare in terms of like, okay, gas is going up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if there's a crisis, you know, what vehicle we hopping in? You know, do you have a bug out bag? You know, are you stocked up? I don't give a damn if you're not in the path of a hurricane. Do you have a costal of arroz and a costal of frijoles? Mm-hmm. And, and do you have this? Do you have that? Um, I think that's just a good way to, you know, oh, weapons. You know what I'm talking about? You got some ammo. You got something to pop, pop. You know what I mean? Something to neutralize, a, 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 you know, a target or anything like that. Defend your home. Hey, call it unpopular. Beto O'Rourke, you can call me what you want. Uh, I don't know where George Lopez stands when it comes to Second Amendment. Do you know? I don't know. Okay, I don't know where Eva Longoria stands. But uh, for the most part, a lot of people on the left are anti-gun. I can't be on the left. I can't be anti-gun. So you got me all the way fucked up. Uh, I already told the government I already lost all my ARs on a fishing expedition. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, th- let me end with this because it's kind of funny and entertaining. Um, there's this video. But what's that dude? J.P. Spears? Oh, yeah. He's great. He's got a new one out where he says, y'all can look it up. He basically says it's uh, Biden's 17 accomplishments. And pff, they're hilarious. He talks everything about like in a very funny tone, like, you know, Open borders, inflation, the Afghanistan debacle. I mean, just all the every, all the crises on top of crises on top of crises. Like we're leaving Americans behind, but we're bringing Afghanis in. He uh, he just did one too about like the super liberal, progressive, ultra uh, left coffee company or whatever it was. You see that one? No, I have to send it to you. Okay, it's ridiculous. All right, man. Sheesh. A lot. A lot to unpack every day, nonstop, here in the United States. Especially with the Biden regime. Yeah. I mean, think about it, man. When it, when Trump was in office, all of his crises and debacles were media created. Everything was, oh, he say, she said. Uh, we heard he said this. And it was all media created. There was no ISIS. There was no Al Qaeda. There was none of this a- Afghanistan, 13 people died. None of that shit. Trump was taking out leaders of he was turning motherfuckers into goddamn I don't know what guacamole you know what I mean Soleimani from Iran get your bitch ass out of here uh, Ali al-Baghdadi whatever blew his ass up Every, he had everybody in check he went and shook hands with Kim Jong-un he was cool with Putin I mean he he was checking uh, with the trade war with the CCP he was standing up to them Everybody was in check. We had so much peace to the point that when you had Trump debating Biden, it never came up. Biden, how would you pull out of Afghanistan? It never came up. How would y'all deal with Al Qaeda? How would y'all deal with ISIS? What y'all going to do about the Taliban? It never came up because it wasn't an issue. All we had was the media 24-7. Oh, this is the beginning of the end. It's a tipping point. Did you see... um What's that? Uh, Jimmy Dor- uh, Dor? Is that mm-hmm. his name? Mm-hmm. Did you see his clip? No. When he's showing like a loop of... Uh, it's like tipping point, breaking news, bombshell, a bombshell. This is during Trump. Uh, 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 beginning of the end. He's going to have to resign. He's going to have to resign. It's like clip cutting and cutting away because you can tell it's a talking point. It's buzzwords. He's going to have to re- resign. He's going to have to resign. Uh, unfit to lead. Unfit to lead. Unfit to lead. Like bombshell, bombshell, another bombshell, another bombshell out of the White House. Fucking ridiculous. All we had was a strong economy, lowest unemployment, buku peace. And meanwhile, they were lying to y'all, saying this man was a Hitler dictator. And now look at where the fuck we at. Imagine how we started this podcast prior to like, you know, because we started at the end of November. We only did this show and, and, and Trump was president for like six or seven weeks. And then Biden came in, right? Um, but leading up to it, we'd have even more stuff to be able to like, if we had this same 
the same like you know mojo going with the same perspective and the same things that we're seeing and understanding unfold um, like upon us Mm -hmm. we'd have all these clips to be able to go back a year and be like look motherfuckers we told y'all january 2020 but obviously pandemic the life was just a completely different world a year ago um yeah there might be old clips maybe the listeners can help us find them but there's probably old clips where we were saying like for example when I was on Gil's show, American Cholo. Oh, that I, one's a good one. Yeah. I might have said, I don't know what, I don't remember what I'm saying on there, but I might have said something like, y'all gonna remember me. I'm telling y'all China's a threat. Yeah. I don't know whose podcast I was on. I might have said, all right, y'all gonna remember me when we at war again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or y'all gonna remember me when this economy ain't doing this hot. But even if, if we had been doing this before the, all of like the real scrutiny, I guess but I, more so before the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. And everything was good, and we saw just how good it was. If only we knew how shitty it was going to get, and we were making clips, you know, I guess a year and a half ago, like 2019, I guess. But everything was so good. Everybody was working. Nobody was paying attention to this shit. It was all fake outrage. It was all fake outrage, right? And people were so focused on just living their lives. But one thing that this has all done, and we've said it before, is that it's made people more politically inclined. Not that we're all going to be scholars and, and experts on all this stuff, but at least... You're literate. Not, politically literate. Politically literate. They're not, you're not going to... No te van a mirar la cara de mensal uh-huh. going forward. And uh-huh. that's how I feel the RGV is looking at it and just Latinos in general. No me van a mirar la cara de mensal. Yeah. But hey, some of y'all want to stay mensals over there because y'all following the wrong people. Some people just need this. I know they say this about me, but I'm going to say this about y'all. Some of y'all need to stay out of politics. Yeah. Y- y'all endorsing the wrong people, y'all. Y'all looking real goofy right now. I ain't, it's crickets. Latino Hollywood that was like, oh my God, that's Pasito. Where the fuck y'all lack? It's cricket. You can hear a pin drop. It's so uncomfortable. Yo voy a votar. Governor Newsom knows I can't recall. I have a cricket sound effect. That's what you hear. That's Latino Hollywood right now. Orale, with Biden, orale, writing with Biden, orale, orale. That's played out. Y'all are the past. Y'all are the past. We passed that. It took six months. The last. We are off of that. We are off of that. We ain't with that no more. That victimhood, that Al Sharpton, that Latino Al Sharpton, that Latino Jesse Jackson type shit. Orale, stolen land, que la chinga, bitch. Go over there with the purple hair teachers, man. With the with the short hair. You over there with that uh what's the soccer player? Rapino? Oh yeah, yeah, Megan Rapino. Y'all on the same side as her. Y'all don't even like America. Y'all don't even like freedom. You need to move your bitch ass to Australia. I said what I said. He dicho caso cerrado. Sas puto. <laughs>